keep alive. Amen. I pray you'll be awake. God has something to study with you today. Your life will never be the same again in Jesus' name. You think about what we are aiming at, where we are going at the end of this year, from this Saturday, 21st of December. Have you heard? The final solution. Somebody help me out. God bless you. And you know, sometimes there are people that make a difference between reading the Bible, hearing the announcement, and all the things we're saying. But this time, announcement, proclamation, decree, prophecy, promise, declaration, everything will come true in your life. Jesus, the final solution in my life, in my family, in my ministry, in the work of my hand. This year will be the best you ever lived in your life. And coming 2020, from the 1st of January, higher, yeah. greater, yeah. better, yeah. richer, yeah. faster, yeah. happier in Jesus' name. Keep up those hands, Father, in the name of Jesus. We well, thank you for the Bible study today in preparation for our retreat. 2019, December 21 to 25. Lord, I pray you will open the heavens upon your people in Jesus' name. Carry us, Lord. Move us on. Move every mountain out of our lives in Jesus' name. Give every brother, every sister, every boy, every girl, the final solution. Well, thank you because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. God bless you. You can sit down. We've been studying from the gospel according to St. Mark. For many months and many weeks now. We've gone through from chapter 1 to the end of of chapter 9. And now we're going to look at Mark in all that we have studied in preparation for the final solution the Lord is going to give you. The topic tonight, the promised experience of the final solution. It's a promise. And it's going to be an experience the promised experience of the final solution. Mark chapter 1. In Mark chapter 1, I'm reading from verse 8. I indeed have baptized you with water, but ye shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. John the Baptist said, I have baptized you. I have declared unto you, I have proclaimed unto you, there is one coming, and you have experienced repentance, and have baptized you in water, but that is not the final. Your final solution will come when he, the expected one, Christ will come, and he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost, whatever you have got. Whatever you have experienced, whatever you have learned, if Christ has not baptized you in the Holy Ghost and fire, 
you have not got the final solution. The final solution comes to all your spiritual problems when he that shall come will come and he'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost. I'm looking at chapter 2 verse 10. In chapter 2 verse 10, but that ye may know that the Son of Man has power on earth to forgive sins. He says unto the sick of the palsy, I say unto thee, Arise, take up thy bed, and go thy way into thine house. Here we find a man totally paralyzed. And this paralytic is he had no solution. And then he was brought to Christ. It was only at that point of coming to Christ, he had the, the final solution to his spiritual problem. Son, thy sin be forgiven thee. And then rise up, take up your bed, and walk. Immediately he arose. His final solution came. We're looking at chapter 3, verse 14. Chapter 3, verse 14, and he ordained toil that they should be with him, that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and cast out devils. He chose toil. These twelve had been religious people, and they had gone to synagogue and to temple. And the priests had taught them. But the final happiness and joy, contentment, satisfaction of being with the Lord, the creator of the heavens and the earth, they never experienced until Christ called them. And they responded to the Lord. And now he said, you will be with me. You have a problem? I'm the healer, you'll be with me. You don't have any confidence, I am the conqueror, you'll be with me. And you're like lost sheep, be with me, I'm the shepherd. And the final solution of loneliness, the final solution of being alone, the final solution of dissatisfaction, all that final solution came, is coming upon your life. Look at chapter 4. In chapter 4, I'm reading from verse 39. And he arose and rebuked the wind and said unto the sea, Peace be still. And the wind ceased, and there was a great calm. They were in turbulence, they were in a storm. And the waves were beating into the ship. And remember that Peter was a fisherman, and James and John were fishermen. They'd never seen any storm like this before. It was like life was coming to an end. No solution to the storm until they said, Master, carest thou not that we perish? And then he arose, he rebuked the wind, peace be still, peace in your life. Peace in your family. Any turbulence in your life, peace will come in Jesus' name. And there was a great calm. Was that final solution? They couldn't find solution to their problem. But Christ rose up and he brought peace into their lives. The Prince of Peace will be with you. It will set you free. Chapter 5, I'm reading from verse 25. And a certain woman which had an issue of blood 12 years and had suffered many things of many physicians and had spent all that she had and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. No solution. She had all this blood going out of her body and she was dying gradually. Becoming lean and lonely because, you know, in the land of Israel, such an unclean woman will not be with the people of God in the synagogue. 
And in that dejection, in that depression, she heard of Jesus. You have heard, it will touch you. Look at verse 27. When she had heard of Jesus, she came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, if I may but touch his clothes, I shall be made whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up. And she felt in her body that she was healed of that plague. That's final solution. It's been going about all these many years. And had spent everything she had. And there was no improvement at all. And then she met Jesus and the final solution came. Final solution in your life in Jesus' name. Chapter 6. I'm reading from verse 30. Chapter 6, verse 30. And the apostles gathered themselves together unto Jesus and told him all things, both what they had done and what they had taught. These are the disciples of Jesus Christ occupied, busy, taking this and taking that, going here, going there, fulfilling the assignment the Lord had given them. But you know, they were giving so much and they were not receiving back. They were being drained spiritually. Even physically, they were being exhausted. Look at verse 31. And he said unto them, Come ye yourselves apart into a desert place and rest a while. For there were many coming and going, and they had no leisure so much as to eat. They were missing quite a lot in their lives. And now the Lord said, Come ye yourselves apart, rest a while, recuperate recover be restored and renew your life final solution coming for them that it is not just running and running walking and walking galloping and going everywhere look at you you are being drained out come around and stay with me for some time this retreat you're coming away from all activities physical activities, social activities, any other community activity, and you're going to be with Jesus, everything that has gone out of your life, all through your life, you will regather and regain in Jesus' name. Chapter 7, I'm reading from verse 37. Chapter 7, verse 37, and they were beyond measure astonished, saying, he has done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. You might say, I'm not dead, really, spiritually. How many things the Lord has been saying and you didn't hear? You might not say, you might say, I am not deaf or dumb. But how many things you have told the Lord you couldn't open your mouth and tell. But now, in your life, in your family, it's going to do all things well. That was a final solution to them. Think about the dead and think about the dumb. All the places they could have gone. All the things they could have received. And they were going through life not hearing sound, not producing voice. And then they came in contact with Christ. And he did all things well in their lives. You come into greater contact with Christ. During this coming retreat, and at the end of the retreat, when your final solution has come, you will say, he has done all things well. You can even say it now. He will do all things well in Jesus' name. Chapter 8, verse 22. 
and they come into Bethsaida. And they bring a, 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 a blind man unto him and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand and led him out of the town. And when he had spit on his eyes and put his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw aught. And he looked up and said, I see men as trees walking. The Lord had touched him. The Lord had healed him. The Lord had ministered unto him. And yet, he had not got the final solution. But wait, the final solution is coming. Verse 25. After that, he put his hands again upon his eyes and made him look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. Your partial miracle will become a total miracle. A complete miracle. For body, soul, and spirit. Complete miracle in your life in Jesus' name. He had his own final solution. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Mark chapter 9, verse 23. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believeth. This man had only one son, and this son had epileptic spirit. And the devil through that spirit wanted to destroy that child. It's gone everywhere. Everywhere religious, everywhere traditional, everywhere whatever. And there was no solution. At last, he brought the child to the nine disciples remaining back because they had gone with Jesus to the Mount of Transfiguration. And he could do nothing. And he said, what am I going to do now? And Christ came. And he saw them asking questions from disciples. And he said, what questions are you asking? And then the man came out and said, Lord, I brought my son to your disciples. He has a dumb spirit. Well, cast him into the fire. Look at all the bones in his body. He'll cast him into the water and he'll knock him down. Look at all these cast in his body. And I brought him to your disciples. And he could not heal him. And he said, If thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Your help is on the way. And now the final solution. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible unto him that believeth. You can see from all those chapters, chapters 1 to 9, that there is a promised experience of the final solution. As you believe, your final solution will come. You have the retreat, you come with expectation. Your final solution is coming in Jesus' name. Three things we're looking at at the study tonight. Number one, our regathering for the final solution. We're gathering together. Gathering together unto him. Our regathering will be in various places. We're going to converge all of us at the retreat location. Our regathering for the final solution. Number two, our reconnection for full supernatural supplies our reconnection as we regather we're going to reconnect with the lord jesus christ who is the final solution our reconnection for full spiritual supernatural supplies number three our recovery the recovery of our failing strength 
the recovery of our failing strength. Whatever is going down, declining in your life, you are going to recover everything in Jesus' name. Number one, what's number one? You will gather with us. You will be there. I said you will be there. Genesis chapter 49. I'm reading from verse 10. Genesis 49 verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet, until she look come, and unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Unto him is a prophecy concerning the coming of Christ. And when he comes, unto him shall the gathering of the people be. And as we gather unto him, there will be salvation, there will be healing, there will be deliverance, there will be provision, there will be answer to every question, there will be solution to every problem. And the church of God said, Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 31. Deuteronomy chapter 31, I'm reading from verse 12. Gather the people together. It's a command of God. Gather the people together, men and women and children and thy stranger. Have you noticed something there? The men, the adults, men, and the women, the women too, the fathers and the mothers, the male and the female, men and women, and the children. That includes all our children, the youth as well as the children. Gather together. We have come for the adults, men and women. Come for the campus, men and women. Come for the youth, boys and girls. Come for the children, boys and girls, and thy stranger, thy invitees, those who are not normally part of the church. Gather all of them together that is within thy gates, that they may hear, that they may learn, and fear the Lord your God, and observe to do all the words of this law. And then it says, and are their children, which have not known anything, may hear. Even those who are ignorant, everyone will hear and learn to fear the Lord your God. As long as ye live in the land, whither ye go over Jordan to possess it. And the Lord said unto Moses, Behold, thy days approach that thou must die call joshua and present yourselves in the tabernacle of the congregation he wants all the joshua's all the caleb's all the people that are even leaders at present he wants all of us to be together great things will happen to everyone to me to you to your family, to everyone in Jesus' name, gathering together. He doesn't want you to stay afar and say, I will listen on my phone. I will listen through the streaming. He wants you to come, gather together. Look at Second Chronicles. I'm reading from chapter 20. Second Chronicles chapter 20. We're looking at verse 2. In Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 2, Then there came some that told Jehoshaphat, saying, There cometh a great multitude against thee from beyond the sea. In this sight of Syria, and behold, they being as the son Tamar, which is in Engedi. Verse, verse 3, And Joshua feared 
and set himself to seek the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast throughout all Judah. Look at verse 4 now. Look at verse 4. And Judah, tell me what follows. Tell me, tell me. Say it aloud. Not just on the tip of your tongue, from the depth of your heart. And Judah gathered themselves together to ask help of the Lord. Even out of all the cities of Judah. And he came to seek the Lord. That's why we're gathering together during this retreat. That we're coming from all places. And we gather together. And great will be the blessings of God upon every one of our lives in Jesus' name. Look at verse 12. O oh, our God, wilt thou not judge them? For we have no might against this company that cometh against us. You have a challenge? You have a problem? You don't have any might? You don't have any strength? Against all the things beating against your life. Look at verse, that verse, the latter part. Neither know we what to do. We don't even know what to do. Any problem that appears stubborn, unsolvable, we don't know what to do. You've been everywhere that you know you can be, and yet there's no solution. We know not what to do, but our eyes are upon thee. That's why they were gathering together. Our eyes are upon the Lord. Your eyes are upon the Lord. He will solve every problem. Look at verse 20. When we get there, because we are getting there. I said this, 21st of this month, we are getting there. Look at verse 20. And they rose early in the morning and went forth into the wilderness of Tekoa. And as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, O Judah, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem, believe the Lord your God. We are going to believe the Lord. He will bring solution to every problem. He will destroy every work of the devil. He will break every yoke, every curse. He will take away in Jesus' name. Believe the Lord your God. And he says, so shall ye be established. He will establish you. All those things that I'm wavering and wobbling in your life, he will make you have an establishment in Jesus' name. Look at the next line there. Believe the prophets, all the preachers, all the proclaimers, everyone that will come and teach us and proclaim the word of God is prophets in the plural. Believe as prophets and so shall ye prosper. I see prosperous people before me. Overcoming people before me. You will prosper. Look at verse 21. And when he had consulted with the people, he appointed, tell me, he appointed, tell me out aloud, singers unto the Lord. I thought since we are going to, to, to the battlefield, I thought you'll gather the best of your soldiers and put uh, ammunition or armor in their hand. And then those uh, soldiers and those captives will go forth into the battle. No, this one is going to be miraculous. He appointed singers unto the Lord that should praise the beauty of holiness as they went out before the army and, so, and, and to say, praise the Lord. For his mercy endureth forever. You know there are people. I know you will not be like that. I didn't hear your amen. While we're singing choruses, so they say they are just singing choruses. But don't you know this chorus singing? Whoever is singing, at the time we get to this retreat, God is going to walk with them. 
you know, some people were singing congregation song. They look at their time, they say, well, the message is not hurting yet. They're only having congregation song. All the blessings, all the miracles, all the promises and prophecies in those congregational songs that have been specially chosen for the retreat, all those things will take place in your life. And then the choir is on, and they say it's just the choir. It's not just the choir. The choir this time is not just the choir. They're going to sing unto the Lord, and as the Lord is singing their songs, miracles will be falling upon you in Jesus' name. And so in verse 22, and when they began to sing, and to praise the Lord, and to praise the Lord sent ambushments against the children of Ammon and Moab and, and Mount Seir, which were come against Judah, and they were smitten. All your enemies will be smitten. Satan on all his hosts will be destroyed and defeated in your life in Jesus' name. We are gathering together for a good purpose. And when the ministers, whether they are ministering in songs or they are ministering and even the ushers and scotches saying, go here, go there, as they are directing us, peace will come to your heart. Miracle will come in your life. Ah, you see, now you don't believe in the miracle coming. Any minister that minister to you, counseling, helping, calling, preaching, singing, miracles in Jesus' name. Look at Psalm 50. In Psalm 50, I am reading from verse 5. Psalm 50, we're reading from verse 5. Gather my saints together unto me. You see, the Lord doesn't expect that those who are already born again, they are saints of the Lord. He doesn't expect them to excuse themselves. I'm a saint of God. I'm saved. I'm born again. I'm sanctified. I'm righteous. I'm holy. I'm filled with the Holy Ghost. I'm even a, student, a Bible teacher myself. You are saints of God. Gather my saints together unto me those that have made covenant with me by sacrifice if you are really consecrated unto the lord you will be there you are submissive to the lord you will be there look at verse 6 and the heavens shall declare his righteousness for god is judge himself will gather together Great things are going to happen. Joel, I'm reading from verse chapter 2, Joel. We're reading from chapter 2 here in Joel. And chapter 2, verse 16. In Joel chapter 2, verse 16, it's still emphasizing to us, every one of us, that we must not miss out it says in verse 16, gather the people, sanctify, set apart the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children, and those that suck the breasts. Let the bridegroom go forth out of his chamber, and the bride out of her closets. Those who have just uh, got married last Saturday, you included you. Let no one say, we're going to Dubai for honeymoon. We're going to South Africa for honeymoon. We're going to Togo for honeymoon. This time is retreat time. And if there's any place to have honeymoon, it is at that retreat. Come, the Lord will surprise you. The solution to any problem that might come in the future, already at that retreat, you will receive in Jesus' name. Gather the people together. Look at verse 21. Fear not, O land. Be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. The Lord will do great things in every life in Jesus' name. Look at verse 25. 
And I will restore to you the years that the locusts have eaten. The canker worm, the caterpillar, the palmer worm, my great army, which I sent among you. Verse 32. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. For in Mount Zion and in Jerusalem shall be deliverance as the Lord has said and as the remnant whom the Lord shall call. That promise is unto you. Obadiah, in Obadiah, has only one chapter. And we're looking at verse 17. Obadiah, chapter 1, reading here from verse 17. I pray this will be fulfilled in your life. But upon Mount Zion shall be deliverance. And there shall be holiness. Not only have an amen. And the house of Jacob shall possess their possession. The house of Jacob, the people of God, will possess their possession. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. Matthew chapter 18, verse 20. For where two or three are gathered together in my name, for where two hundred or three hundred are gathered in my name, for where two thousand or three thousand are gathered in my name, for where 200,000, 300,000 are gathered together in my name, there am I in the midst of them. The problem solver will be there. The mountain mover will be there. The sickness healer will be there. And the one that destroys all the works of the devil will be there in Jesus' name. What will happen when we get there? Go back to verse 18. Verily, verily, I say unto you, whatsoever you shall bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. As we get to that retreat, any spirit will bind or be bound. Any curse will challenge and command to go will have to go out. Any evil power, evil spirit will command to go out, will go out in Jesus' name. And whatever ye shall lose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. Whatever blessing will release upon you will be released upon your life in Jesus' name. Point number two now, our reconnection for full supernatural supply our reconnection for full supernatural supply the reason we are regathering together is to reconnect and to reconnect to the fountain of life and there'll be an overflow in every one of our lives in jesus name some 78 some 78 and I'm reading from verse 20, Psalm 78. We're reading from verse 20. Behold, he smote the rock, that the waters gushed out, and the stream of the land, the next word, overflow, overflowed. The streams of blessing will overflow in your life in Jesus' name. Can he give bread also? Can he provide flesh for his people? He will answer your question with a miracle. Verse 23. Though he had commanded the clouds from above and opened the doors of heaven, 
the doors of heaven will be opened upon your life. And as rain down manna upon them to eat, and had given them the corn of heaven. Not ordinary corn, the corn of heaven. Supernatural. Man did eat angels' food. He sent them meat to the full. Amen. It has happened already. Your blessing is waiting for you to collect. Psalm 81. Reading from verse 13. Psalm 81, verse 13. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. He wants us at this time to shed off that habit of doing whatever we're going to do. If we say, you know, I don't normally go to December retreat. I have to travel to my village. I have to do this. I have to do that. And that's what I planned already. He said, oh, that my people had hearkened unto me. He doesn't want us to do what we have always done. And just be coming from home, we're there, and then we go out, we're there, we go out. Oh, that my people had hearkened unto me, and Israel had walked in my ways. I should stone have subdued their enemies. As we obey the Lord and gather together and reconnect this December retreat, all enemies known and unknown, hidden or secret, they will be subdued before you. And turned my hand against their adversaries. The haters of the Lord should have submitted themselves unto him. But their time should have endured forever. Forever blessings. Forever supply. He should have fed them also with the finest of the wheat. And with honey out of the rock should I have satisfied thee. We're going beyond water out of the rock. We're going to have honey out of the rock. You are going to have honey out of the rock. They say there is no work. They say there is no provision. They say there is no job. Not for you. I said not for you. The Lord will open your rock and water will come out. It will overflow in your life in Jesus' name. Isaiah chapter 48, reading from verse 18. Isaiah chapter 48, and we're reading from verse 18. Oh, that thou art hacking. To my commandments, then had thy peace been as a river, and thy righteousness as the waves of the sea. Verse 19, the siege also had been as the sand, the barren will have the miracle children. And the offspring of thy bowels shall be the gravel thereof. His name should not have been cut off nor destroyed from before me. Your name will not be cut off. Verse 21, the thirsted not when he led them through the deserts, he caused the waters to flow. It will cause the blessings to flow. Flow out of the rock for them. He cleaved the rock also. And the waters gushed out. And your miracles gushed out. And the power gushed out. First Kings chapter 18. First Kings chapter 18. We're reading from verse 21, 1 Kings 18, 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long hold ye between two opinions? 
Will I be there? Will I not be there? How long? All she between two opinions. Will I go? Will I stay behind? How long? All she between two opinions. If the Lord be God, follow him. But if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. And then Elijah proposed and he said, All right, let's see the God we're going to follow. I'm on one side. And the prophets of Baal on the other side. Let them take a bullock. Let them sacrifice. And the God that answers by fire, he will be our God. And so they prayed. They shouted. They rolled on the ground. They caught themselves. They spoke some things like they were speaking in tongues. And uh, nothing happened. And he said, go aside. And he repaired the altar of the Lord, that's Elijah. And then he looked up to the Lord. And he said, Lord, hear me. And the Lord heard him. The Lord will hear our prayer warriors in Jesus' name. All our preachers, men and women, all who are teaching the word of God and reminding us of the promises of God and praying for us, the Lord will answer all our prayers in Jesus' name. Our overseers, regional overseers, and state overseers, and national overseers, anywhere, everywhere, the Lord will answer the prayer in Jesus' name. And when I pray, the Lord will answer my prayer for you. Look at verse 38. Then the fire of the Lord fell and consumed the burnt sacrifice and the wood and the stones and the dust and, the, and, and licked up the water that was in the trench. When all the people saw it, you will see your miracle. You will see the power of God upon your life. When they saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. Verse 41. And Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. I hear the sound. Abundance of rain. Abundance of miracles. Abundance of power manifestation. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Camel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees and said unto his servant, Go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and he looked and said, Tell me, there is nothing. Ah, he didn't look well. When you get to the retreat, you are going to look up to the Lord, looking for your miracle, looking for power manifestation. And when I ask you, what do you see? If you say there is nothing, I'll say check up again. If you say there is nothing, I'll say check up again. Before you leave that retreat, you must see what you are looking for. And said, go again seven times. And, he, and it came to pass, it will come to pass in your life. In your family, it will come to pass. In your heart, it will come to pass. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there rises a little cloud out of the sea, like a man's hand. And he said, Go up and say unto Ahab, Prepare the chariots and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile. And it came to pass, it will come to pass while we're there in the meanwhile. That the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. And Ahab rode 
that means he was riding on his chariots and went to Israel. And the hand of the Lord was on Elijah. The hand of the Lord will be upon all our prophets, all our preachers, all our ministers, and upon me too in Jesus' name. And the hand of the Lord was upon Elijah, and he guarded up his loins. Look at this, look at this, look at this. And he, tell me, tell me, tell me, ran before Ahab to the entrance of Jezreel. Ahab was riding on a chariot, and Elijah was running by feet. And he ran before and beyond the chariot. Don't you understand? Our preachers are going to be energized. Our Elijahs are going to be energized. Weakness will vanish away. Even for me, weakness will vanish away. For you, weakness will vanish away. New strength. New health. As we are ministering to others, they will receive, and then the Lord will minister to us directly and will have strength and power and energy in Jesus' name. In uh, Philippians chapter, chapter 4, Philippians chapter 4, we're reading from verse 19. Philippians chapter 4. Verse 19, it says, But my God shall supply, my God shall supply, my God shall supply. Any need in your life that will not be addressed, any problem in your life that will not be solved, any difficulty that will not be removed, I can't hear you. Any mountain that will not move away from your life. Any blessing you desire that will not be supplied. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And somebody said, Matthew chapter 6. Matthew chapter 6, we're reading from verse 32 and verse 33. For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and tell me, Amen. And tell me again, Amen in your life. And all these things shall be added unto you. No good thing shall be subtracted from your life. No good thing shall be taken away from you. But all the good things you are still looking for, all the good things it will supply in your life in Jesus' name. Romans chapter 8, Romans chapter 8, and we're reading from verse 32. Romans chapter 8, verse 32. Let's back up to verse 31. What shall we say then? To these things, if God be for us, who can be against us? Brother, if God be for you, who can be against you? Sister, if God be for you, who can be against you? The Lord will drive them away. He that spared not his own son, but delivered him up for us all, how shall he not with him also freely, fully, finally give us all things? Are you expecting all things? Are you believing? They will come. Point number three now, the recovery of our failing strength. The recovery of our failing strength. 
You're losing power, you recover. Losing strength, you recover. Losing anything in the family, you will recover. Everything you have lost, everything it appears you are losing at the retreat, you are going to recover everything. Look at Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Reading from verse 28. As thou not known, as thou not heard, that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is he weary. There is no searching of, one, of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. He'll give you power. And to them that have no might, he increases strength. He'll give you strength. Even the youths, he's talking about those who are not seeking the Lord. Even the youths shall faint and be weary. And the younger men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord, children, they that wait upon the Lord, youths, they that wait upon the Lord, campus students, they that wait upon the Lord, fathers and mothers, they that wait upon the Lord, adults, they that wait upon the Lord, shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and they shall not faint. You are going to receive so much strength at the retreat that in the coming year, all the race you need to run, you will run, you will not be weary. And the path you need to walk, you will walk and you will not faint in Jesus' name. Chapter 41, verse 10. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. While you are coming to the retreat, the Lord will be with you. He'll be with your vehicle. He'll be with all the buses. And nothing negative will happen to any of our people on the road in Jesus' name. The mighty God of battle will be with everyone. Fear, the, fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. He will strengthen me. Say, he will strengthen me. It will help me. It will uphold me. He, he says, I will strengthen you. Yea, I will help you. Yea, I will uphold you with the right hand of my righteousness. Behold, all they that were incensed against thee shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing. They that strive against thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shalt not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they shall war against thee. They that war against thee shall be as nothing. Their charm will be neutralized. Their occultic power will be neutralized. And all their intention against your life. A hey, new year is coming. He will not see the new year. It's a lie. You will see the new year. And he'll be as a sinner of naught. For I, the Lord, thy God, will hold thy right hand. Saying unto thee, fear not, I will help you. Fear not, I will help you. Verse 15, behold, I will make you like a new sharp threshing instrument. Having tears. Thou shalt thresh the mountains and beat them small and shall make the hills as chaff. Thou shalt find them and the wind shall carry them away. All the antagonism against you, all the enmity against you, all the charms against you, the wind shall carry them away. 
and the wild wind shall scatter them. Thou shalt rejoice in the Lord, and shall glory in the Holy One of Israel. Are the people of God there? Chapter 43, Isaiah chapter 43, verse 2. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burnt. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. Let heavens hear your amen. Verse 18, remember ye not the former things, neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall ye not know it? I will even make a way in your wilderness and rivers in the desert. Somebody shout, Amen. Isaiah chapter 54. Isaiah chapter 54, I'm reading from verse 17. No weapon that is formed against thee shall prosper. Every tongue that shall rise against thee in judgment, thou shalt condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, says the Lord. The righteousness is of me, says the Lord. Jeremiah, I'm reading from chapter 30. Jeremiah, chapter 30. We're reading from verse 17. Jeremiah, chapter 30. Reading from verse 17. For I will restore health unto thee. Who is God speaking to? I said, who is God speaking to? As you come to this retreat, every prayer answered, every sickness healed, every problem solved, I will restore health unto thee. I will heal thee of thy wounds, says the Lord, because they called thee an outcast, saying, This is Zion, whom no man seeketh after. But that retreat is going to change everything. Jeremiah chapter 31, verse 1. Jeremiah 31, verse 1. At the same time, says the Lord, will I be the God of all the families of Israel? And they shall be my people. Every family will be blessed. Every problem in every family will be taken away. Verse 11. For the Lord has redeemed Jacob and ransomed him from the hand of him that was stronger than he. Any power stronger than you are at that retreat, that power will be broken and destroyed in Jesus' name. Chapter 32 of Jeremiah, Jeremiah chapter 32. Verse 17, our Lord God, behold, thou hast made heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretch out arm, and there is nothing too hard for thee. Nothing too hard for God. Nothing too hard for God. No mountain too high for God. No valley to deep for God. No evil spirit too powerful for God. Nothing in your life will be too hard for God in Jesus' name. Jeremiah chapter 33. Jeremiah chapter 33. We're looking at verse 3. Call unto me and I will answer thee. If you have never had serious prayers answered, I will answer thee. If you have never had miracle walking prayers answered, I will answer thee. If you have prayed and fasted and sweated and, you know, done everything and the answer has not come swiftly, I will answer thee. I will answer you. 
your heart's desire, He will answer you. Everything you are asking from the Lord, He will answer you. Call unto me, and I will answer thee, and will show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Great and mighty things which thou knowest not, He will do it. Verse 6, Behold, I will bring each health and kill. Healing, that's one. Kill, that's two. Health, that's three. Total healing and health in Jesus' name. I will kill them and will reveal unto them the abundance of peace, says the Lord. Any amen? And I will cause the captivity of Judah and the captivity of Israel to return. And I will build them as at the first. He will build you up. And I will cleanse them from all the iniquity whereby they have sinned against me. I will pardon all their iniquities. There will be pardon and peace. There will be purity. There will be power. There will be salvation. There will be sanctification. There will be baptism in the Holy Ghost. There will be power unlimited for every one of our lives in Jesus' name. I will pardon all the iniquities whereby they have sinned and whereby they have transgressed against me. And I shall be, and it shall be to me a name of joy, and a praise, and an honor before all the nations of the earth, which shall hear all the good that I do unto them, and they shall fear and tremble for all the goodness and for all the prosperity that I procure unto them. Your time has come. My time has come. The Lord will do it. Ezekiel chapter 34. Ezekiel chapter 34. And it tells us in verse 26. And I will make them and the places round about my hill a blessing. And I will cause the shower to come down in a season. And there shall be showers of blessing. In all the retreat locations, there shall be showers of blessing. In your life, there shall be showers of blessing. In all our families, there shall be showers of blessing. Yes. Chapter 36, Ezekiel 36, verse 11. And I will multiply upon you, man and beast. Our congregations, our churches will increase and multiply. And it shall increase and bring fruit. And I will settle you after your old estates. The good old days will come back in every one of our lives. Good old days of miracle, good old days of power, the good old days of prosperity, and the good old days of uh, power and uh, progress will come in every life in Jesus' name. And will do better unto you than at your beginnings. Mark that your Bible, it will happen. Mark that your Bible, God will do it. And I will do better unto you than at your beginnings. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. A good amen from deeper life. Verse 25, then will I sprinkle clean water upon you. And he shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols will I cleanse you. A new heart also will I give you. 
a new spirit will I put within you. And I will take away the stony heart out of your flesh. And I will give you an heart of flesh. Verse 25, that's salvation. Verse 26, that's sanctification. Verse 27, this Holy Ghost in Masham Baptism. And I will put my spirit within you. And will cause you to walk in my statutes. And ye shall keep my judgments and uh, do them. Verse 37. Verse 37. Thus says the Lord God, I will yet for this be inquired of by the house of Israel to do it for them. I will increase them with men like a flood. It says, all those promises is giving us. It wants us to gather together. It wants us to be together. It wants us to ask him. He will do it for us. Ezekiel chapter 37. Ezekiel chapter 37. I'm reading from verse 1. The hand of the Lord was upon me. And he carried me out in the spirit of the Lord. And he set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bulls. And he caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley. And lo, they were very dry. And he said unto me, Son of man, can these bones live? You know, their condition came to such a condition that the Lord was asking the prophet Ezekiel, look at them. Look at how degenerate, how dry, how scattered, how devastated they are. Can these bones live? And I answered, O Lord God, thou knowest. Again, he said unto me, prophesy upon these bones and say unto them, O ye dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. No matter how dry anyone is, as we get to the retreat and as you get the blessings of the Lord, refreshing will come. Thus says the Lord God unto these bones, Behold, I will cause breath to enter into you, and ye shall live. Brother there, sister there, ye shall live. Life ebbing out, strength going out, ye shall live. You are fainting and you are weary, ye shall live. And I will lay sinews upon you, and will bring up flesh upon you, and cover you with skin, and put breath in you. And ye shall live. And ye shall know that I am the Lord. So I prophesied as he commanded. And as I prophesied, there was a noise. And behold, a shaking. And the bones came together, bone to his bone. And when I beheld, lo, the sinews and the flesh came up upon them. And skin covered them. But... There was no breath in them. After the first day, after the second day, and you have received some blessings, you will not rush back. You will stay to the end until your cup is full and overflowing. Until strength and power will come into your life without measure in Jesus' name. Verse 9, then said he unto me prophesy unto the wind prophesy son of man and say unto the wind thus says the lord god come from the four winds O breath and breathe upon these lane that they may live so i prophesied as he commanded me and breath came into them and believed you will live and he stood up you will stand up upon their feet 
an exceeding great army. An exceeding great army. Say it, an exceeding great army. Remember how strong you were in years gone by. Remember how mighty you were in years gone by. Those years are coming back now. Second Kings, Second Kings, chapter four. And we're reading from verse one. Second Kings chapter four, verse one. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, The servant, my husband, is dead. And thou knowest that thy servant did fear the Lord. And the creditors and the creditors come to take unto him my two sons to be born men. And Elisha said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me, what hast thou in the house? And she said, The handmaid has not anything in the house save a pot of oil. Then he said, Go, borrow thee vessels abroad of all thy neighbors, even empty vessels borrow not a few. Empty vessels borrow not a few. Every empty vessel the Lord will fill. Bring your wife, bring your husband, bring your children, bring your college students. Bring your secondary school, high school students, bring your children in the primary. Every empty vessel the Lord will fill in Jesus' name. Bring your friends, bring your invitees. The Lord will fill everyone to overflowing. And when thou art come, come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons and shall pour out into all those vessels, empty vessels, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her sons, who brought the vessels, empty vessels to her, and she poured out, and she poured out, and she poured out, and it came to pass when the vessels were full, number one full, number two full, number three full, number four full, number five full, number six full, number seven full, all your vessels full. When the vessels were full, that she said unto her, unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, There is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. The oil did not stop flowing until all the vessels there were full. The oil of miracle, the oil of power, the oil that overflow will keep on flowing until all the participants are full in Jesus' name. Then she came and told the man of God. And he said, go sell the oil, pay thy debt, or your debts are going to be paid in the new year. And live thou and thy children of the rest. Live thou and thy children of the rest. Amen. Second Kings chapter 6. In Second Kings chapter 6, verse 1. And the sons of the prophet said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell with thee is too straight and too small and too narrow for us. Let us go, we pray thee, unto Jordan. And take this, every man a beam, and let us make us a place there, 
where we may dwell, you are going to enlarge your coast. Enlarge your apartment. Enlarge your profession. Enlarge your family. And all the provision for that enlarged family, the Lord will supply in Jesus' name. And he answered, go ye. And one said, be content, I pray thee, and go with thy servants. The Lord will go with us. I too, I will be with you. And he answered, I will go. So he went with them. And when they came to Jordan, they were cutting down wood. But as one was felling, cutting down a beam, the axe head fell into the water. That's their strength. That's their power. That's all they had to be able to cut down the tree. And the axe head fell into the water. You know, some people, they keep on using the wooden handle of that axe and they get nothing. Well, we'll be wise. And he, and he cried and said, Alas, master, for it was borrowed. And the man of God said, Where fell it? The axe said, Where fell it? Your weapon, where fell it? Your instrument, where fell it? The arm of the Lord, the power of the Lord, where fell it? Your provision, where fell it? Your source of strength, where fell it? And he showed him the place, and he cut down his cheek and cast it thither, and the iron did sweep. Somebody shout, and the iron did swim. All the power that has fallen into the ocean of forgetfulness, all that power will come back again. All the strength that has fallen into the sea of carelessness, all that strength will come back again in Jesus' name. Your axe head will swim again. Your power will come back again. Verse 7, Therefore said he, Take it up to thee. And he put out his hand and took it. Show me that hand. And he stretched out his hand and took it. Where is your hand? Where is your hand? You stretch out your hand. During this coming retreat, you will catch everything you have lost. No matter in which ocean, in which sea, in which river, that thing fell, stretch out your hand and catch your miracle in Jesus' name. Rise up now. We're even going to begin tonight. We're going to start tonight. Everything you have lost, the power, the strength, the vision, the backbone, the conviction, everything you have lost, it's time for you to recover. You are going to recover them. You are going to recover them. You are going to recover them. There will be no lack in your life. Open your mouth and pray. There will be nothing that you are asking for that you will not receive. Open your mouth and pray. Come to the retreat for the final solution. Come. I receive power. Come. I receive strength. Come. I receive enablement. Come. I receive everything you've lost. And the Lord will make you a sharp, threshing instrument. You'll come back to the foundation of strength all over again.